Hello, in this video, I want to focus on some tips and techniques for earning your best grade in Math 081. So we're gonna look at the guidelines in the rubric and some student samples of work for the Extend Your Learning assignments. Okay, so here's the rubric that I use when I grade your Extend Your Learning assignments. Obviously, everybody should want to be in that 20 out of 20 range. Um, where it shows exemplary, okay? So if you wanna earn a 20 out of 20 on your assignment, you wanna meet the criteria in the exemplary column. So first you need to show a deep understanding of the topic with fully developed answers. That means you're clearly justifying um, and or explaining your answer to the prompts. So when you're asked to write complete sentences to explain your answers, make sure that you're using proper vocabulary and that your sentences are clear and they are easy to understand by the person who is reading them. Um, for all mathematic work, make sure you don't have any errors in your reasoning and that you're showing all your work and that it's clear and easy to follow. Okay, so those are the guidelines to earn 20 out of 20 on your assignments. And you can find this rubric in Canvas. It's attached to each Extend Your Learning assignment. Okay, let's dig a little deeper in those two criteria that fall under the exemplary column. First is showing your work. So I know you've all heard it before. A math teacher has told you in the past how important it is to show your work, and you still might be wondering why. Why, why do I have to show my work? Why do they always ask me to do this? Well, by showing your work, you're documenting your mathematical thinking as you interact with the problem, and you're also strengthening your knowledge of the given concept. You're increasing the chances that you can successfully complete a similar problem in the future and you're laying the foundation to be successful. So it's showing your work isn't for me. I mean, yeah, I like looking at it because I enjoy mathematics, um, but it's not, you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it to strengthen your skills. You're helping yourself. If you make a mistake, then you can identify that mistake and start over. And you're giving yourself a resource to look back on as you're studying for quizzes and exams down the road. So by showing all your work, like I said, you're creating a great resource for yourself and you're strengthening your skills and you're laying the foundation to be successful. All right, so you've shown your work. Now you're like, I have to explain my answers too. Why do I have to do that? <laughs> Again, explaining your answers isn't for me. It's not even really for anybody that you're explaining it to, even though someone else might benefit from your explanation, it's more for yourself. Um, being able to explain how to solve a problem to somebody else really demonstrates the deep understanding that you have, and it's solidifying the understanding in your own mind. If you can't explain something to somebody else, then you really don't understand it. So if you try to explain something to somebody else and you can't like formulate the words or formulate the sentences, then it's, it's not a bad thing. It just means you need to practice it a little bit more until you're more comfortable. So when you can explain the steps you took to solve a problem, you not only understand how to get the right answer, but you understand why that process led you to the right answer. So then when you see a similar problem in the future, you'll know how to make a plan to solve it. Um, a big part of math is recognizing patterns. When you explain your mathematical thinking, you start to identify those patterns and you'll gain a deep understanding. And then you'll be able to generalize later on down the road when you see more complex problems. You'll say, oh, I recognize this pattern, this type of problem, and I know what solving technique goes with it to help me be successful. So that's why we explain our answers. It really does increase our own learning and our own understanding. Okay, so now you're like, all right, I will show my work, I will explain my answers, but how do I know if I'm doing a good job at it? How do I know if I'm doing enough to get that 20 out of 20 score? So I always tell students, pretend as if you're talking to another student in the class and they really need your help and they need your explanation to help them understand how to do the problem. So make sure you're including all the steps. Don't leave anything out. Don't make them have to guess how you went from one step to the next. Don't just repeat something you read in the notes or something you saw on the media lesson. Don't just repeat it word for word, but put it in your own words. Um, highlight the important points or the relevant points in your explanation and then explain how one step leads to the next. Or I always say, pretend like you're writing the answer key 
or you're writing a solutions manual. You want to make sure everything follows one step to the next so whoever opens up that solution manual has all the information they need. If you're not used to explaining your answers and you're not sure how to like craft your response, that's okay. Try some of these sentence starters. So for instance, the first step I took was blank and then fill in the blank. It might naturally come once you have some places to start like these sentence starters. Or I chose to multiply because the problem blank. So if you look at these sentence starters, if you fill in the blanks there, that might help you get the ball rolling when you're starting to explain your answers. All right, let's look at some samples of work. It's always nice to see what other students have done to earn that exemplary column on the rubric. So let's take a look at some models, right? So here's Erica. Notice how she gave enough detail in her work so another student who was confused would be able to read her work and use it to find the LCM of two numbers. So she showed us how she made her table um, or her lists of multiples for 15 and 25. And then she showed us how she circled the first one that was common in both lists. So another student could easily look at this and figure out how to find the LCM of those two numbers. Um, so again, imagine as if you're going to take a picture of your work and your friend is at home and you're texting your friend and you're like, here, here's how I solved it. What do you think? Does this make sense to you? Is there enough information there that they'd be able to understand your thought process? All right, here's another student work, sample of student work. And this one's really nice because this student came up with their own unique example. So not only did they just complete the problem that was on the extended learning assignment, but to explain in general how to find the LCM, they made up their own example. So she found, uh, used an example of finding the LCM of 30 and 45. And she went even a little bit deeper and told us what to do if a number shows up more than once in one of your lists. So you can see how the number three shows up in the list of factors of 30 and 45 when you make the prime factorization. But notice how three shows up twice in the list for 45. So what do you do when it shows up more than once? Um, so when there's more than one occurrence of the prime factors and you, maybe you should try here, pause the video, read her explanation and see if now you know what to do when one of the prime factors shows up more than once. So providing an example is really, really helpful. So remember, when you have to explain a process in your own words, act as if you're explaining it to someone else who, who doesn't know how to do it and they're relying on you. Be specific so someone else could be successful when they follow your steps. All right, and now let's take a look at question five, Moses and Layla. We're supposed to guess Moses's numbers. Now, before I talk about the um, GCF and the LCM and all the mathematics of this question, let's relate it to something that might help us get a grasp, a better grasp of what we're supposed to be doing in this problem. So let's say you walk outside in your backyard and the ground's all wet, the cement on the patio is all wet. And let's say your brother comes out and he says, oh, wow, it must have rained outside because the ground is all wet. Is your brother, must he be true when he says that it rained outside? Well, no, it doesn't mean it rained. Maybe someone came outside and spilled a cup of water. Maybe the dog came outside and peed on the ground. Maybe someone had a water balloon fight. I don't know. There are other reasons why the ground could be wet. Yeah, it's possible it rained. But that's not the only reason that the ground could have been wet. So when Moses said he's thinking of two numbers, the GCF is 2 and the LCM is 60, Layla said his numbers must be 10 and 12. So what most of us did was we checked the numbers 10 and 12. We said, okay, their GCF is 2, their LCM is 60. Layla must be right. Well, granted, that is a possible pair of numbers that Moses could be thinking of, but are those the only two numbers he could have been thinking of? Did you know there were other possible pairs? There was actually three other pairs of numbers that could have worked for Moses. Um, so the numbers 10 and 12 aren't the only possible pair of numbers. So what, like I said, what most of us did was we checked 10 and 12, we saw that they worked, we were like, okay, she's right. But then we stopped there. So always challenge yourself to dig a little deeper, think a little bit more critically. Well, does he have to be thinking of 10 and 12? Are there two other numbers that could work? Um, so again, it said, if you disagree, find all possible pairs he might be thinking of. So here's my little tidbit of information for you. There are other pairs. And as I mentioned in the announcement, I am going to give you guys the chance to redo your assignment. So now you know there are other pairs. Um, 
dig a little deeper, see if you can find them. So when you redo the assignment, you can earn 20 out of 20. And one more thing I just want to make sure, use the resources in Canvas for each Extend Your Learning assignment. Um, <clears throat> you can see here is the assignment for Extend Your Learning, but right before it in the module, you see there's a content page called Using Venn Diagrams to Find the GCF and LCM of Two Numbers. On that content page, you see I have a little mini lesson here for you explaining how to use Venn Diagrams appropriately. And then there's even a little video for you to watch to show you how to make the factor tree to find the GCF and LCM of two numbers. So make sure you're looking at those content pages and going through the little mini lesson before you dive into the Extend Your Learning assignment. Because I guarantee that the Extend Your Learning assignment will seem, um, you'll just feel more confident and comfortable when you're completing it if you've already looked at the content page on the mini lesson that came before it. Because they're related. I'm teaching you how to do the problems on the extend your learning assignment when you go through that mini lesson on the content page so they're definitely connected so make sure you're using those resources <clears throat>